Aloha and welcome to this very extremely brief introduction to dynamic web applications. And I mean introduction in a couple senses. Um, this, we're not going to try to get into the full range of dynamic web application um, possibilities in this module. Um, but we are going to get into the basic ones because you probably are starting to get a little tired of building these websites with a zillion pages, each of which has to be created manually. So for example, in the Surferpedia website, the idea that for each surfer that we create, we have to statically create a page for them, you know, that just doesn't seem very scalable. Um, and obviously, real websites aren't done that way. So in this module, we're going to get at the very basic things you need to know in order to start adding dynamic and interaction uh, between the users and, and your service that you're putting on the web. First problem we have to solve is how are we going to handle user input? And one, the kind of the, the initial way, fundamental way or, you know, traditional way is via the HTTP form um, control. And so in order to figure out how that works in you know, our situation, we, there's two components to it. One is there are, um, there's particular kinds of support for forms within the Play framework. You're going to learn about that. And then Twitter Bootstrap has um, ways to kind of dress up forms to make them look a little nicer. Uh, so you're going to have to learn about that as well. And then finally, of course, you want to always be able to make sure that the user's entering data appropriate into your form. So we're going to talk about how you go about the process of validation. Given that, the second aspect of dynamic web applications is being able to display different kinds of content on your page depending upon the state of the web app, right? And so that means that we need to, in a sense, embed some kind of processing into our pages. And there's a lot of different ways that different uh, web application frameworks do it. Some are better than others. The Play Framework well, it's kind of cool because it uses Scala, and you know we know that our view uh, files, our view template files, are actually compilable Scala classes. So that's kind of cool. Otherwise, it um, uses the kind of the standard, uh, you know, expression language that you overlay with your HTML. And in um, the Play world, these are these you think of them as at directives. So there's an at for, um, you know, directive that enables you to do. Um, iteration and there's the at if if you want to do conditional stuff and so forth so you'll see how that works it's it's you know it's pretty straightforward at the simple level unfortunately with play they very quickly started introducing these crazy implicit field constructor stuff um, for Twitter bootstrap and so what I'm going to try to do is carefully navigate you around the reef the shallow water and the reef um, of the play framework with respect to these directives, and I kind of try to keep you safe where you can figure out what you're doing, um, and it's not too bad. Finally, we're not going to be covering persistence. So you're going to read, when you're, particularly when you're reading the Play for Java book, you're going to read about the models and annotating them um, in order to support your eBean, ORM, all that kind of stuff. We will get there, but um, my view is let's just do one thing at a time, and the simplest thing to do at this point is to just um, support forms, mock up a little bit of back end so that you can you know, kind of save the data in memory and retrieve it, and make things that look kind of cool until you bring the website down and then all your data is lost, you know, which will quickly get irritating, but at this point allows you to not have to worry about all the database stuff, and, and believe you me, it's a hassle databases. Um, you know, you can't live with them, you can't live without them. So anyway, we'll live without them for a, a couple more weeks anyway. Um, and, and so the, the final thing that I'm going to just point out we're not going to cover is that, that beyond forms, there are, in, and beyond these kind of, you know, um, regular res request response cycle types of interaction, the, you know, the web these days has much more interesting kinds of interaction that are possible, including AJAX, server-side events, comment, you know, all sorts of real-time stuff, um, and awareness, you know, locational awareness, and blah, blah, blah. Um, I don't think we'll get there this semester, but basically, um, you know, you got to crawl before you can ride a bicycle, or get into your jetpack, 
or something. Um, so uh, let's just, you know, let's let's figure out forms because, you know, even if you've got locational awareness, you probably want to get some, you know, user input from a form at, at some point. And um, that will serve you well when you when you build up to these more advanced kind of things. All right, so enjoy this module. Um, see you later.